week 12. Grip fighting. We're gonna start with collar grip. Okay, so you can remind them if this is a gi situation, sport jiu jitsu, you're gonna have a grip low on the sleeve with downward tension. The trailing hand is gonna come as close to the fingers as possible, meat to meat. Shake, shake, pop. Shake, shake, pop. We're always popping downward or outward where the grip is weakest, right? We can also have them drift. This is a self-defense situation. There's no grip. We're just gonna put a U and a five finger grip. U, five fingers. Pop, pop, pop is like an earthquake destabilizing his pressure. Downward and backward. Push and pull principle. And we can remind the students why this is a problem. Number one, they're controlling the distance now. If you want to run away, you can't. You're at the mercy of this grip. Also, we're at the end of the punches. So we're breaking all the rules for distance management, right? That's technique number one. Technique number two, instead of disengaging, we're going to use his grip to engage. So remind the students it's a stiff arm and it can be very problematic to try and go head to head with a stiff arm. So we're going to So I'm going to turn my shoulders, elbow goes on top of the wrist, and that's going to give me an entry for my underhook. We're grabbing the shoulder, and it's very important that our elbow is flared open to make the underhook stronger. My other hand is going to reach and try to control the hand, to control punches, but also to give me control over the inside space. Head is inside, making it hard for him to face me. If he faces me and I'm not policing the hand, we can end up in a neutral clinch. So my head is preventing him from turning in, and my hand is preventing from punches and him getting an underhook of his own. Remind the students that we don't want to have hip separation here. I want to have my hips close to his, so I'll split him in between. And let's take advantage of the mats. Walk my training partners to the mat reminding the students that the wall can be used for us or against us, so we're gonna use it for us if it's available to help neutralize and control our opponent. Okay, splitting him in half. When we're doing this drill, we can have our training partner simulate an untrained reaction. Someone, someone would, something someone will do if they have no training experience, which is abort this grip and grab me in a headlock. Duck and make our way to the rear clinch. Two on one, controlling the back. One more time. One, underhook. If he knows what he's doing, he's gonna fight me here. He's gonna try to collapse the elbow, make my control a little bit less greater. But I wanna have a high elbow, and that's gonna trigger someone to grab me in a headlock. He can't grab the headlock because of the hand control. So as he goes to grab my head, I'm just gonna squat and make my way to the back. So we'll have our training partners pushing each other to the cage or to the wall. Every now and then the training partner will try to surprise you and grab you in a headlock. Simply squat and put your shoulders to your ear. Move number three. Using this space to trigger him to bend. When he bends, I'm gonna put a chin strap on his chin and control him on the ground. So I have a choke here. If they're not using the mechanics of the choke correctly, they at least have a neck crank. So I'm pulling his head off the mat. That's gonna be a neck crank. A really good, strong position to control someone from. Talk some sense. Even if I let his head go, I don't need to talk to him from here. You have that option. But using this inch or so, as I strap, chin strap on. One, two, he bends, chin strap. My hand is gonna guide him to the ground, my underhooking arm. And I'm circling, circling and pulling his head. Boom, controlling my descent so we don't hurt each other. And now you can't see it, but I'm grabbing his chin 
and digging in for the choke. Week 12. For resistant training, we're going to have the training partners work from the clinch. So now we know we no longer have the advantage. We no longer have an underhook and inside head control, wrist control. We're going to assume that we didn't do a good job. We gave him the underhook. We're here. We're here in the, in the clinch, under over. So we're going to have the training partners start to pummel. Okay, elbows tight and start to pummel with the wrist, not the shoulders. So I'm, I'm pummeling in, small pummels here. When my right hand comes in, so does my right foot. My head goes from one side of the body to the other. I have the training partners start drilling this sequence so they can start to get comfortable. But then use the walls and use double underhooks as a reference. Once we're live, we're gonna have the training partners trying to fight to see if they need double underhooks. If I get double underhooks, grabbing my hands, I win. He loses here, that owes me 10 push-ups. It's not the only way they can win. If we can use the underhook control to push my training partner to push on the wall, it's another way I can get him to do 10 push-ups. So that's a resistance training drill for week 12.